Hello everyone. Um, let's continue. We are almost at the end of this unit. Um, and the today's topic is continuation of assisted reproductive technology. In this we will see gift and zift. In the previous class we have seen artificial insemination, uh, intrauterine insemination. So today we are going to discuss on uh, gift and zift, GIFT and ZIFT. What are the learning objectives of today's class? It is to understand the principle of gift and to understand the principle of gift both and the principle as well as the procedure. The session outcome is understanding the procedure of gift. You will be thorough with the procedure of gift and gift as well as uh, the drawbacks and the advantages of both these procedures. Now what is gift? Gift here stands for gamete intrafallopian transfer. So gamete intrafallopian transfer is what GIFT is. So what is a gamete? It is either a male or a female sex cell, a sperm in case of male and egg in case of female. These sperm and eggs are mixed and injected into one or both fallopian tubes in a procedure called as gift or gamete intrafallopian transfer. Now we know that a normal fertilization when the egg is released after ovulation it passes it moves upward in the fallopian tube and if by then the spermatozoans are available uh, the fertilization of egg and sperm takes place somewhere in the fallopian tube okay close to isthmus area but uh, in, in this case too similar process happens uh, fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube itself okay and uh, then the blastocyst form will move downward to the uterine cavity and gets implanted okay now what are the different steps of gift or gift the basic steps of gift are first one is super ovulation second is egg har harvest third is insemination fourth one is gamete transfer just recall the steps involved in in vitro fertilization you will see similar steps in uh, gift too okay the first step is super ovulation and egg harvest now what is this super ov ovulation large number of ovum are maturing and they, they get released that is what super ovulation is increased uh, egg release okay and usually an x-ray is conducted to the patient for determining the presence of at least one fallopian healthy fallopian tube see uh, in vitro fertilization embryo transfer is done in case of damaged or uh, uh, broken uh, fallopian tubes so uh, ivf can also be one more like a uh, supplement for in in those couple who have already undergone cubectomy so if in, instead of going for um, recanalization they can go for ivf that is a possibility okay so here in this technique at least one healthy fallopian tube is must so because fertilization is going to take place inside the uh, fallopian tube so one at least one fallopian tube must be healthy okay so that is a must if, if uh, both the fallopian tubes are damaged then one cannot go for gift uh, gift sorry they'll have to select ivf et only okay now super ovulation is done by administering hcg that is nothing but human chorionic gonadotropin and uh, the following dosages are given 10,000 IU, IU refers to international unit, okay, on the sixth day of uh, E2, E2 is a estradiol, so there are three types of form, three forms of estrogen, estrone, estradiol and estriol, so here they are considering the second type that is estradiol, so on the sixth day of estradiol rise, 10,000 IU of HCG is given and the next um, dosage is given on the seventh day again same quantity okay 10,000 in IU of HCG is given on the seventh day of E2 rise E2, E2 is nothing but extra diol. Now after that the next step is uh, insemination. See after super ovulation what happens large number of at least num uh, 5 to 6 ova undergo maturation okay about which we have again discussed in our previous star class. So number of uh, ova undergo maturation and they are ready for ovulation and at this stage 
uh, they will be harvested under the microscope in a graded uh, okay so um, uh, first they will undergo i mean first it will be um, uh, oh, super ovule after super ovulation ovulation in the sense not complete it is actually maturation after that what they'll do uh, by laparoscopic uh, methods they will collect the egg okay and once the egg is collected they will be examined under microscope so that they can grade whether the egg is matured or not okay and after that eggs only matured for eggs will be separated and they'll be taken in a dish which already contains the uh, sperm okay and this process is called as insemination insemination artificial insemination we have seen where a release of or insertion of semen into the uh, uterine cavity is called insemination so here mixing up of egg and spermatozoa in a petri dish is called as insemination and here again the sperm is prepared just like uh, how it is prepared in IVF by washing and removing any unwanted materials that are present so that uh, fertilization is not hindered. Capacitizing the spermatozoa is important. Okay. And um, yeah, so uh, usually when exactly the egg is released, I mean uh, retrieved as we have seen once again in IVF, uh, it is conducted 36 hours after the HCG trigger. We have seen this point even in IVF. Now, once the mixture is loaded, then uh, this will be transferred uh, to the uh, fallopian tube. See, remember, they won't waste time here. No fertilization takes place outside. As soon as egg and spermatozoans are mixed, okay, mixture will be loaded to a, a particular catheter and then it will be released to the fallopian tube. And this is done through the fimbriae. Okay, so fimbriae is the opening, finger like projections that are present in the opening of the fallopian tube are called fimbriae. So through these fimbriae, at the, uh, at the center of fimbrial area, there is a small pore called as ostium. So through that, uh, the catheter is passed and these uh, eggs, egg and sperm mixtures are released to the fallopian tube. Okay, and this is done uh, by looking through the laparoscopy. Usually, how many eggs will be released? Up to four eggs and large number of spermatozoans are injected into one or sometimes both the tubes, just for confirmation. Okay, so uh, at this time, what they'll do? The medication is also given to the mother so that uh, it helps in fertilization as well as in future uh, implantation, particularly progesterone related hormones are given. Okay, so here is the procedure. First step is uh, aspiration of the eggs after superovulation, that is 36 hours after injecting human chorionic gonadotropin. Okay, and then they are placed in the semen sample, process is called insemination. Okay, and then the transfer of gamete. Okay, gamete is transferred, you see here, specialized catheters. These are the fimbriae, the finger like projections through the ostia, they are released to this fallopian tube. So, somewhere here, the fertilization takes place just like the natural method of fertilization. And this is one more picture. So, colored one, you can see the egg is surrounded by large number of spermatozoa. A drop of this mixture is dropped somewhere here, okay, through the ostia and then the fertilization takes place here. This is the normal ovary, okay. Yeah, so after uh, release of these egg and spermatozoa mixture into the fallopian tube, they are allowed to fertilize in the fallopian tube only. Please remember that, underline that word. And then they get fertilized. Those fertilized egg, which will be now called as zygote, will undergo uh, cleavage and produce a blastocyst. This will implant to the uterine wall just like a normal pregnancy. Okay, and the further future uh, development is as normal as the natural pregnancy okay now uh, what are the applications of gift G gift we are we are we have understood at least by now that it is a gamete intra fallopian transfer okay gamete is transferred to the fallopian tube intra fallopian into the in within the fallopian tube okay so it is recommended by the doctors if the couples have unexplained infertility, they don't know the reasons for infertility in uh, both the uh, partners, then the doctor might suggest application of gift. Or sometimes IVF cycle might fail, okay, in that case also, uh, because there are there is a chance that the blastocyst might not may fail to implant 
because of so many rejections and all so in such cases it is a uh, doctor might suggest go for gift so that uh, now here the difference is that blastocyst might not be accepted uh, in case of ibf because it might be taken as a some foreign body there is a chance and it might be rejected but in case of uh, gift what happens fertilization since fertilization takes place inside the fallopian tube itself it is almost similar to the natural process so acceptance percentage of accepting such blastocyst is more so in such cases one might go for uh, gift if ivf fails okay and there is one more thing if a woman is having at least one healthy fallopian tube the doctor might suggest a suggest gift okay uh, if male infertility is due to a poor quality of the spermatozoa or insufficient sperm count oligozoospermia we have seen in previous class so in oligozoospermia case or if the quality of the spermatozoa is very poor in such cases doctor might suggest to go for a gift now what are the advantages so here fallopian tube act as a laboratory that means fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube and uh, since it is taking place inside the uterus so i mean fallo fallopian tube it will be similar to normal conception okay um, and endometrium will also be more receptive okay because they are uh, these uh, blastocysts are born are uh, produced inside the uh, fallopian tube itself now what are the disadvantages of uh, gift so um, yeah here one can release this spermatozoan and uh, egg into the fallopian tube but whether the fertilization will take place or not is a question mark okay so sometimes there is no 100% surety that the fertilization will take place not only that the quality of the embryo produced is also cannot be uh, uh, like uh, we cannot access it through gift so that is the major problem okay and if give if the uh, woman is having a damaged or a complete blockage in the fallopian tube gift cannot be a solution for such people so next one is zipped which is again similar to gift but the difference is that intra fallopian transfer is same there it is gamete gametes both gametes male and female gametes here it is a zygote okay so z here refers to zygote so zipped is zygote intra fallopian transfer it is also called as prost because pr here refers to pro nuclear pro nuclear stage s stage and it is transfer so what is this pro nuclear stage transfer you during fertilization both male and female uh, uh, gametes they will be present as a nucleus and the nucleus is called as pro nucleus male pro nucleus and female pro nucleus since um, just immediately after the formation of zygote is still in the pro nuclear stage this step is also or this procedure is also known as prost pro nuclear stage transfer okay now here uh, what happens is fertilized egg is transferred so, so since fertilized egg is transferred it is also called as tubal embryo transfer see in ivf in vitro fertilization embryo transfer okay but here it is tubal embryo transfer because the embryo is transferred to the tube fallopian tube so it is also called as tet so zipped or prost or tet what are the different steps again it is similar so women's uh, ovaries are stimulated okay with the medication to increase the um, probability of uh, more multiple eggs and uh, then the eggs are retrieved using aspiration procedure okay and then these eggs are fertilized in the laboratory okay similar to a process that we have done in ivf in vitro fertilization okay washing and all is done so fertilization takes place outside the body in vitro but the difference between ivf and zift is that in case of zift within 24 hours it is transferred whereas in case of ivf 3 to 5 days are taken after 3 to 5 days blastocyst will be transferred or it i mean that is which is ready for implantation okay so this is the major difference between zift and Uh, ivf okay so again it is done through a laparoscopic procedure and it is placed in a fallopian tube and um, 
fertilized eggs are then injected fertilized egg which is zygote is injected into the fallopian tube okay and uh, once it is released then the normal uh, test is done uh, so since fertilization has already taken place cleavage proceeds and then the blastulation and blastocyst will get implanted okay then further uh, development takes place and then next they wait for pregnancy symptoms they will have to wait for at least for 2 to 3 weeks and after 2 to 3 weeks usually by the end of the second week or the beginning of the third week pregnancy test is done so if it is successful then further monitoring will be done if failure failure then next set of zift can be continued okay so most of the times here instead of just going for a biosensor blood test can be done to detect the pregnancy now in what case zift cannot be used it is in case of tubal blockage so both in case of uh, gift and zift tubal blockage uh, cannot be uh, I mean in such cases one cannot go for both these procedures uh, either total tubal blockage or a significant tubal damage in both the cases it cannot be done and even in those couple who have undergone tubectomy this technique cannot be used okay so if there is an anatomical problem with the uterus then also this cannot be used because for the development of the baby uterus healthy uterus is must so in such cases too one cannot go for this method okay in case sperm is totally unable to penetrate the egg in such case also this won't be useful okay so this is the zip procedure you can see here the catheter is used and the fertilized egg the zygote is released so the difference between gift and zip is that their gametes are released here zygote is released okay immediately after fertilization within 24 hours okay and then further development takes place the summary of the class is gift stands for gamete intrafallopian tube transfer and uh, sperm and eggs are mixed and injected into the uh, both one or both the fallopian tube in gift zift zygote intrafallopian tube transfer okay it is also called as prost or tet okay which uh, pros prost refers to pronuclear stage tra transfer so these are the references for my today's class thank you